Okay, here is the chassis of the GA35 amp. Uh, I just couldn't live with those hideous corroded knobs, so I removed them and cleaned them up a little and uh, polished up the uh, little stainless steel inserts in each so they looked a little more presentable. Uh, I didn't go all out and try to make them look like the new one, but uh, they still have a nice patina. Uh, they kind of give the appearance of being on an amp that was well cared for which probably wasn't the case in this one. Um, inside, as you can see, somebody's already beat me to it. Um, they've replaced some filter capacitors. Uh, the original capacitors were held with little straps here and here, typical Gibson style. Um, other things that look like they have been fooled around with I see some other new capacitors. Um, this is the tremolo adjustment. And if you look down here, somebody, this has one of those optic tremolos. Somebody has made or homemade uh, the little bug for the tremolo. This will make it a little more complicated. I'm going to have to check it out. I understand this is supposed to be a 24 volt. Uh, diode, um, we'll see. Um, anyway, that's going to be uh, one thing I need to address. Uh, I've heard stories that these things are nightmares to work on. I see why now. It looks like a plate of linguine or something here. It's just a mess. Um, not any fun to work on. Hopefully it won't need a lot. But uh, just a quick scan around the inside here. Most of it is original. It does have a three-wire plug already installed. It looks like they did it right. Um, that's it. Next, start testing components and digging into the plate of linguine. Okay? I'll see you in the next episode. Okay, here's a little uh, bug or optical a tremolo sensor here um, after I've rewired it. Uh, I don't know whoever did this uh, had the right idea but boy the execution was terrible. All the wires were all tangled up. It was a mess and the little resistor photoresistor here was aiming down instead of over here at the light emitting diode. So I tried to straighten out the wires and do some extra, uh, cleaning up the soldering. Now I'm going to put the little tube around it so that they're uh, sort of like in a gun barrel where um, this then will be flashing directly onto the optical resistor. Well here is the reverb tank and I'd forgotten that uh, Gibson didn't use Accutronics tanks. Uh, some of them were Hammond. In this case it's supposed to be a Gibbs Model C which is the same as an Accutronics 4 FB2A1C 1475 ohms impedance on the input and 2250 ohms impedance on the output. Uh, everything seems to check out uh, so I'm going to put it back in its little vinyl bag and move on. Here is the CTS speaker. Uh, it, As you might expect the cone had dried out a bit and so there were some little tiny little cracks around the perimeter. Um, ideally I would recone it. I've uh, been having a little trouble getting uh, coning materials lately. So what I did was to use a little silicone, black silicone sealer and try to seal the cracks to uh, keep them from growing. Speaker is uh, nice and solid otherwise. I'm going to give this a try and see how it works. Okay, here's a nice close-up view of the underside of the chassis. Got the huge power transformer, filter choke, output transformer, and surprisingly this uh, amp doesn't use a tube uh, for a phase inversion. Instead it uses a transformer. So this is the phase inversion transformer and this is the driver for the reverb tank. Okay, I've cleaned up and tested the tubes. Uh, they didn't mark the sockets, and with little tubes like this, uh, it's kind of scary if you make a mistake and plug them in the wrong places. So I went ahead and just made a little homemade 
marking system there. As you can see, they're all ready to go. Now I'm going to give this one more test to see if the replaced 12 AU7, uh, remember one of them had a short, um, if I, since I've replaced it, if that peps up uh, the tremolo or, heaven forbid, the reverb function of this amp. Okay, here's what was wrong with the uh, reverb in this amp. The terminal strip unit here had at some time or other been actually pulled out of the transformer and then stuffed back in, I guess to look innocent, um, so that when I tried to uh, remove the wires, the little clips from either end, this thing was just flopping around and finally it just fell out. So I had to go down inside the transformer, find the two tiny little wires, I think they're smaller than human hairs, and solder each one back to its terminal strip so that then there would be continuity here in this winding of the transformer. It worked, and the reverb now uh, functions really nicely. Okay, here are the tubes from the GA35. We've got the two uh, 6 EU7s, the two 12 AU7s, and the 12 AX7. And uh, four of them tested out just fine. Actually, fairly strong, good, healthy tubes. But one of them, a brand new 12 AU7, had a dead short in position two on my Hickok Model 600A tube tester. So I replaced it with a new healthy 12 uh, AU7. Uh, that is the oscillator tube for the tremolo and remember the tremolo did not work on this amp so that may have been the culprit and now with this new tube we'll see how things go. The OA2 cannot be tested on, a, on my tube tester uh, I'm not sure if it can be tested on others but one thing you look for if you've got one of these and you want to see it uh, check it is uh, look to see if it's discolored um, if there's evidence of gas leakage or anything like that this looks like a brand new tube these things are pretty bulletproof they're voltage regulators and they don't have a filament inside they're really more like a zener diode so um, you, you really don't test them and they rarely fail okay the 71 uh, I'm sorry 7591 S's uh, both tested out okay. They're a brand new uh, match set of uh, JJ tubes. As you can see, they have here a bias, uh, some sort of index or number that means something to them. It doesn't really mean anything to me um, on the tubes. They tested out okay. Uh, so uh, I'll be plugging these back into the amp and hopefully with this new tube, we're going to see some uh, tremolo action. Okay, see you in the next uh, chapter. Okay, here we are with the GA35 chassis, all finished up and ready to go back into the cabinet. As you can see, the faceplate has been cleaned up, the knobs were cleaned up, and the little stainless inserts had their corrosion removed and were polished. Um, the pots for each were cleaned with a uh, silicone. Uh, contact cleaner, the filter capacitors instead of flopping around inside like fish on the dock uh, have been secured to uh, terminal strips so that their 450 volts remains in the circuit rather than going to the chassis. Uh, I installed an adjustable bias circuit here uh, so that I could adjust the bias of the fixed bias 7591 tubes. Um, I show how to do this in a separate short video that you might want to check out if you'd like to try this. It's really a nice modification. I bias the tubes at 70 percent of maximum plate dissipation. Max for 7591s is 19 watts so I bias these at about 15 which is still considerably higher than they were. They were running at about 9 or 10 so uh, that's going to make a difference in headroom for sure. Okay, the uh, screen resistors had to be replaced. Uh, the, that's typical really. You should always look at your screen resistors. Uh, they had roasted to the point that they were at about 2K instead of the proper 1K. I put in higher wattage 
uh, resistors just to slow down that from happening again. Uh, the optical tremolo, the wiring was cleaned up, it was aligned and put back together. I replaced the shorted 12AU7. I repaired the reverb transformer. Um, that's on a separate uh, portion of this video uh, where the terminal clip had pulled out. Um, then I tested, believe it or not, all of the values of the resistors and capacitors on the plate of Linguini here and uh, found uh, you know, a few that were sort of out of the uh, prescribed value and I replaced those just to play it safe. So that's it. Um, it hasn't been that much of an ordeal really. Uh, let's button it up, put it back in the cabinet and see how it sounds. Well here's the GA35 plugged in and ready to go. For comparison's sake I'm going to simulate what it sounded like when I first got it. Okay, that, I didn't record it then um, but I can duplicate that sound. Listen. Just ice pick in the ear shrill and that was at a loudness uh, volume control of 10, uh, very low gain, and no bass, and all treble, and very unpleasant. Now, let's hear what it sounds like after it's been repaired. Okay, now the loudness is at about 6, and the uh, treble and bass are at 5, just neutral. The guitar, everything's at neutral on it. Medium output um, and uh, the tone control is in neutral. Uh, see if you don't think this might be a little more pleasant. Wow, some bass showed up. Uh, some mid-range and you still have a really clear upper frequencies but they are not going to punish you like it did before. So it's a really nice clean channel. Now let's take a look at the reverb channel. Okay the reverb channel uh, has the same impressive increase in gain as the normal channel and is actually a little warmer, a little more bass. <laughs> Clear, but plenty of bass. Um, really, I think, really nice tone. Um, okay, now let's try the reverb on this, which is pretty darn impressive. Okay, this is the reverb set at about five and a half. Really nice sustain on the reverb. Now things really start getting crazy when you go up to like 8. It's almost like the, the bed springs uh, ringing or something. It's um, actually almost overboard and 10 is just ridiculous. chamber. I think uh, reverb probably is best around six, but you got to admit it's pretty impressive. Okay, here we are uh, with the tremolo turned on. It's not as impressive or overpowering as the reverb, but I think it's adequate. See what you think. Mm -hmm. 
seasick or anything but I think that'll do and I guess if you want more uh, tremolo you can um, use it some sort of add-on foot pedal or something like that to uh, to pep it up I can't imagine needing a whole lot more than that and on that happy note uh, we're going to end the two-part saga of the GA 35 Gibson amp in many ways, uh, its performance is way better than I was led to expect. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this series and uh, the result, and that you'll join me on future videos uh, featuring vintage amplifiers and what it takes to get them to sound right. I appreciate your time and interest, and stay tuned. Thanks.